Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. 9.4 is finally hit, and with it, along come the Italian TDs. Now, look, every man and his dog in the YouTube world is probably rushing or already rushed to get out those videos detailing of those top tier tanks. But Minotaro, I took a different view. <laughs> You've got to, most people are going to have to grind their way through. So yesterday I did a stream and I started the tier 5 TD and moved all the way up to the tier 9. And I didn't have enough time to do the uh, Minotaro. But in that video, in that stream, a little gem basically stood out. And it is this tank, the Passato. Is it Passato? 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 I don't know. I don't speak Italian. The little tier six Italian TD. Now I actually like this tank. I played it and I thought it was pretty funky. And um, a lot of the time, you know, it surprised me to be fair. So I decided instead of doing a video on the tier 10 Minotauro and compete with everybody and just do that, I thought, you know what? I will do a video on one of the low tiered ones, this one. And we're going to look at how I play it. We're going to look at how I equip it and what I like to do with it. So this is what it looks like. It's a nice little squat little TD. It's very small with a very big gun. In fact, the gun looks bigger than the tank, um, to be honest with you. You've got to imagine there's a breech block in there somewhere. So you've got a, you've got a gun this big, a breech block. Yeah, it's bigger than the tank. <laughs> Let's be honest with you. But it's not a bad little tank, this and, it, it, okay, it's a tier 6, and therefore it's going to come up uh, across some pretty hefty compo uh, opponents like the Smasher and the Annihilator and things like that, if you happen to be bottom-tiered. Um, and it's going to come across, you know, pretty tricky tier 6s as well. You know, thinking along the lines of the ARLs, the KV-2s, and stuff like that. But what's this tank actually like? Well, before we get into that, we're gonna jump in and I'm gonna go through what I load it up with. Because I, I, it may work for you, I don't know. So here we go, we're jumping into my equipment loadout for this particular tank. Now, first and foremost, you can see I've got a gun rammer. That increases the DPM and it also makes the reload time slightly better. Now, some of you out there may say, wow, why are you not rolling out with calibrated shells? Well, look, if I stick the calibrated shells in, it's only going to give me an extra nine millimeters of penetration. That really doesn't make that much of a difference, I don't think. Not at this tier. So I'd rather increase my DPM, I'd rather be able to get that load time better than go out there and have an extra nine millimeters. And I would prefer, me personally, I would prefer to just sacrifice that a little bit and make sure that my shots are, are, are much better effectively. I've then got for Vitality the defense system because why not? Um, I mean, I could have improved modules, but what's the point? I'm going to use the defense system, just get those percentages of getting things like ammo racks, crew injury and en engine damage increased. I then run it with a camo net. I want to get my concealment up, not down. I'm in a TD. I'm not expected to be front lining this. So I got that extra 14% bring me up to 68% when I'm stationary. I could use the improved optics, but it only gives me an extra 12 meters of view range. I've already got 250, 200, uh, 240 odd meters of view range. It's a TD. I rely on my other team spotting for me. So I would rather have the camo net coming down. I've got the enhanced gun lane device because I want that aim in time to come down. It is pretty, pretty massive as it is, 4.7. That's, that's quite a lot. So I want that to come down. I could put the supercharger in, but there's no point, not for this particular tank. I'd rather have that better aim time. And then move across, I have the enhanced armor that gives me an extra 4% of the hull and the turret. Now I could go for the improved assembly, which gives me, which increases the HP. Okay, it gives me an extra 57. I'm at tier six, 57 hit points is like nothing, not really. So I'd rather have that 4% strength to the armor. No point me sticking in an engine accelerator. It gives me, you know, it doesn't really do much. 
So I'd rather have that improved control for that whole turn rate. It is a fixed case, mate. I want that tank to be able to turn around if I get sort of swamped by the enemy. I can then use, look at, can I use the vertical stab? Well, it says greater accuracy when shooting while the tank is moving. I don't want greater accuracy when I'm moving on a TD. I want this, the refined gun. Increases my chance of hitting the enemy. In other words, it reduces that dispersion at 100 meters. So what is that? Well, dispersion is, you've got the reticle come up and dispersion is how far the shell will travel not shall, how far the round will travel or the projectile will travel over a set distance. So it comes out the barrel like this and then it will start to fan out. By reducing that, you're reducing that fanning out effectively. So that's why I have the refined gun. I am a TD. I am meant to be smacking things from distance. I then got toolbox, because I do, I never put, I never do this. I never have any art tracks. I always have the toolbox. And I've then got the high-end consumables. Moving to consumables, I'm just running it with this. I've got a repair kit. I've got a speed boost, although I do interchange between speed boost and the other repair kit. But at the moment, I've not been tracked that many times in this tank. And, of course, I've got adrenaline just to give me that extra boost. Over to provisions. Well, I want my crew to be at the top. So I've got the cheese head increases my range, increases my DPM, my reload time, my aiming time, etc, etc. I've then got the protective kit, gives me protection to the crew from all injuries, increases my module repairs and stuff like that. And then moving across, I have a cinnamon roll. Again, it just gives me some slight improvement on my crew. Ammo loadout. Oh, I've been experimenting this one. A couple of things. Firstly, I don't need that much HE, okay? I'm not going to be going around the round everywhere smacking HE for, you know, all in sundry. So I've only got five loaded, okay? I'm, I'm expecting at tier six, a lot of tanks to be coming front on. So there's no point me loading a shed load of HE. I've got 15 um, heat. Now, the reason I've got that there is just, just in case, okay? I generally don't spam Pramo. Um, unless it's absolutely necessary, unless I really, really, really need to make that shot for whatever reason. So I've only got 15 in there, and then I've got 30 armor piercing. That's going to be the main ammunition, to be perfectly honest with you. Finally, of course, camo. I've just got my Dr. Disrespect camo on, and here's an important note, guys. Doesn't matter what camo you use, 4% to your concealment is 4% to your concealment you all should be rolling out with some form of camo okay even if it's just crappy camo doesn't it doesn't really matter if you're going to set the world on fire with your fashion display on your tank four percent additional concealment is four percent additional concealment simple as that let's have a look at the stats of this little beastie and see what we've got going now when i rolled out in it yesterday i actually went out stock first and then went to the first gun and then finally went out fully loaded now the videos i'm going to show you are fully equipped so let me just change my video there you go that's better now we can see what i'm talking about so what's the hit points like on this little beast well you've got 950 that's not a lot but don't forget it is a tier 6 it is a td and it is meant to be pretty e we've then got armor 132 at the front you will get bounces you will see that in the replays 53 on the sides oh dear and 36 on the rear. Chance of fire when the engine is hit, 20%. Um, that's about normal for a tank like this. Concealment, as you know, we've already gone through that, so I've upped it 68, 51, 15. It's not too bad. What about the gun? Well, this is the top gun. Now, my DPM is 2,151. My reload time is just shy of nine seconds. Penetration on my AP is 172, on the heat 239, and the HE 50. That's going to give me damage of iron alpha, 300 on the AP, 260 on the heat, and 350 on the HE. Aiming time, as we saw, because I've got certain bits and bobs loaded, brings it down to just under five seconds. The dispersion also has come down. What about the gun depression? Well, it's seven degrees. Seven degrees down, 18 going up, and it's got 18 degrees left and right. Speed, well, you're going to be knocking out allegedly 42 kilometers an hour going forward, but the average speed is less than 30. The terrain crossing ability is not too bad if you're on the road. 
mm, it's okay on the ground and it's you know pretty bad in the water so that's all the stats of the tank but what's this thing actually like to play and what tips are there that we can utilize to get the most out of this little tank so here we are rolling out on Copperfield okay it's a small map but we are in tier 6 so you expect little things like this and with the seven degrees of gun depression, you're not gonna really be able to sort of fight those ridge lines. But the thing about this tank, okay, and it's the thing about a lot of tanks in Blitz, because we all sit there going, oh, there's a very tank, or oh, it's a bit of a naff team. The thing about this, these particular tanks is, it's not always about um, big damage and this and that. It's about positioning. It's about you knowing what the tank can do, what the tank can't do. So here I am on Copperfield. And already I'm being, you know, I've put a smack into the Mejdi. I've knocked him for 500, and, well, for four, 300 basically. And I've bounced 220. Okay, this tank will bounce frontally if you sort of wiggle and jiggle it a little bit. Struggles to get that gun depression down, so you've got to pick your targets nicely. It's a bit of a sluggish tank, okay? It's not particularly mobile. You can get some good use out of it, and because it's quite small in squat, when you're behind little dips like this, the enemy are gonna find it difficult to actually get a good shot on you. The idea behind these type of tanks, especially TDs guys, is patience. You've got to be patient. Now, I'm not a big fan of sitting and camping at the back, not even in a TD. I'm a relatively aggressive player, and I like to play the tanks, especially new tanks, rather aggressively i want to see what they can do i want to get the most out of them i want to understand their weaknesses and their strong points now we've just dished out 1.3k we've taken a kill and we've pretty much held this line as much as we possibly can i'm now going to rush on to their um their little tier 5 tv boom he's gone we've taken two kills he's wrecked my engine that's why i'm suddenly going incredibly slow we're turning the game around. We're not setting any records here. We're not sort of saying, yay, we're fantastic, look at us. We're doing what we can to win the game. And that is the thing. 1.7K damage, 490 blocked, three kills. I'm happy with that game. And that is what this tank can do. Just be mindful. Patience is the key in a lot of respects when you come to playing this game. Okay, those who go rushing headlong are, are going to come at the sticky end of the at, at, at the bad end of the stick, so to speak. We become top damage there. We get a second class for our troubles, and I'm happy with that game. And the point I'm trying to make is this: patience is the key. You know, we held that particular corner for as long as we could, and once we realised that we were in a position to push, we then pushed. And that's what you've got to consider. Anyway, let's have a look at a different game. And let's see if we can have any hints or tips on that one. Ah, uh, so here we are rolling out on the dreaded mines. Now, being low tier, mines actually isn't a bad map. It's 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 pretty big when you're low tier. When you're upper tier, however, i.e., you know, those tier nines and tier tens, this map is just too small for those big tanks. And I really wish war gaming eventually, maybe one day will remove this map from those upper tier rotations. But that's another story for a different video in a different day. So here we go, this little Lippard, bless him. He's got a little bit aggressive. We're gonna come around the corner, load an HE and take him down, which we do. Now, as I said in the previous replay, I'm not one of those players who likes to sit at the back and camp, not even in a TD. So mindful of the fact I've only got seven degrees of gun depression in this little thing, we're gonna roll up to this ridge and we're gonna see if we can put a little bit of pressure on the other team. Here's the SU-100. Have I got enough gun depression, that seven degrees, to poke over the top in smacking? Yes, I have. And this is the thing about this tank. Seven degrees isn't a lot, I admit, but it's just enough to put the fear into the other team. It's just enough to get over, poke, and put that shot in. And that is what I like. And this tank is pretty low, to be fair. And this is the point about this tank. It's not big, it's not bulky. It's got a low profile. And that low profile really does help it a lot. And you can do some really good things in this tank. Now, I've heard some people say, oh, it's pretty bad, it's not good, it's pretty awful. 
But I found this tank to be, well, a little gem. It's a nice all-round TD. It's got a pretty decent gun. It's got a very nice reload. It's got a good profile. Okay, it's got pretty bad armor on the sides and on the back, but frontally, it's not too bad. I mean, you've seen us bounce in the previous games. I know why the KV-2 there decided to hit me with HE is anybody's guess. But you can do some nice things in this tank. And don't be shy about it. Okay, it's a bit sluggish. It doesn't like getting off the blocks very quickly. But once it gets up to speed and once you get used to it, it's actually a very nice tank. Look at this. I'm gonna. That's a big block. That's a big bounce. And this poor Object 244 is now going to feel the wrath of this little Tier 6 Italian TD. Again, I'm not setting the world on fire. We're not breaking any records here. We're just doing well. And that's why I think this tank is going to be one of those little gems in Tier 6. One of those TDs that you're going to you're going to grow to love in time. And the th yeah, okay. Not everybody likes tier six, not everybody likes rolling out in tier six. And admittedly, I've been up tiered in this game. But fact of the matter remains, this little TD played correctly, put in the right positions, doing the right things, really will be able to hold its own and give the enemy something to think about. We get a second class there, we do 1800 damage, we take two kills, we get a fair amount of credits, and that's all, that's always a benefit. And we end up being top damage, I think. Yes, we do. So that's why I like this little TD, but that's not the last replay. Let's have a look at the last game. So here we go with the last game. This is me rolling out in the little tier six here on Falls Creek, which is a pretty nice map for this tank. And I'm gonna take it to this position and be slightly more passive aggressive rather than aggressive. Oh, hello KV2. Oh, that was just a terrible shot, and uh, I find that the velocity on this shell is not that great, and those destructible objects on these maps generally hurt the uh, hurt the shell velocity. But the KV-2 is going to stick his nose out, and I'm going to smack him anyway. Now, like I said, patience is the key when playing a lot of tanks, and this tank is no exception. Take the shot, back off, get into a, into a position of safety, Try to get your camo reset and don't, don't, don't stick your nose out until you're fully loaded. Do yourselves a favor. Don't be in a rush all the time, okay? Do what you can. Wait for that aim time to come down, boom. Now look, we, we haven't done anything spectacular. We've taken a kill, we've knocked out just shy of 800 damage. And at the moment, we generally got control of the game. Unfortunately, we're going to take a bit of a smacking there. That was a great shot from that uh, that Tier 5 TD. He's got better gun depression than I expected, if I'm being honest. But now there, Tier 6 Passato is going to try and rush me. Get a good shot into him, hurt his engine. Stick one round, load the HE. And this is when you need that HE to get these good rolls. 350 near his damn it, into the back of him. He's now a one shot. I've still got HE loaded, thinking I can put it through, but I forget that he's got like a spaced armor type thing there. I now think that the M6 on my team is going to deal with him. Uh, he's only a ram and he didn't bother, so I've got to do a big donut and spin round and smack him, which we do. We've now got three tanks against three tanks. We are two, D, two TDs against three mediums. I can see that the T3485 is a one shot. The Strava, however, is a little bit harder for me. So let's see if we can get this gun down. Yes, we can eventually. And we take out the T-34. We're now going to push down onto the Strav, hopefully narrow those angles on the front plate. Yes, we do. And we take down the Strav with a nice 214 roll. Just the gargoyle left. Now we've done 1,939 damage. We've taken four kills and we've blocked 585. And if you notice, I have not used the Pramo. As I said, I'm not a big fan of using Pramo unless it's absolutely necessary to really ensure of that penetration. I found the gun on this tank, the top gun on this tank is good enough. Although, as I said, when you hit those sort of objects that are destructible, it seems to hurt the, the, the penetration or the velocity. Get a good bounce there on the gargoyle. 
We've still got plenty of hit points. He's not going to one-shot me unless he ammo racks me. Get a great 250 into the side. Still wriggling and jiggling, trying to narrow those angles. Doesn't work, but doesn't matter. I'm going to reload in time. Take him down. Finish the game on 2,305. Bounce 835. Take five kills. And I am very happy with that game because it gives me that golden M. This is why I think this tank is one of those little gems residing in tier six. It's a beautiful little tank. And once you get used to it, you too will find it's a beautiful little tank. Anyway, that has been the Passato, the Italian TD that is now residing, courtesy of 9.4, at tier six. I've been Fujit, by all means comment and everything below because those comments are for you to tell me what you think of these tanks or what I need to do to improve these videos to make you better at playing these tanks. If you like the video, by all means, say like, yeah. And if you haven't subscribed, press the subscribe button. Why, why not? It costs you nothing and it really does help me out and my little channel. Until the next time, guys. By all means, tell me what you think of these tanks in these videos. And uh, remember the following. It's just a game. So stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because that really is what it's all about, you know. Having fun and being happy.